This lesson is for Linux users only. If you are using Windows, you can skip to the next one. The assembler used in this course is NASM, NASM, the NetWide Assembler. If you're using Red Hat Linux, you have a set of distribution CDs and NASM is on it in the form of an RPM file. Or if you want to get a newer version of the RPM file, you can do so by visiting the website. If you're using Debian or Ubuntu, you can get it by entering apt-get install NASM. In any case, you can get the latest version here. Go to this website, www.nasm.us. Here you'll find news about the current status of the assembler and links to other information. You'll find the latest version of the assembler and the documentation at this site. The Internet has a tendency to change, so it may look different by the time you get here. When I did it, it worked like this. At the top of the web page, I found a link for download. When you click on this link, you get a list of directory names. Each directory contains one version of the assembler. When I did it, as you can see, the newest versions were on top of the list, and the release date to each one was on the right. Notice the top ones have the letters RC in their names. That stands for Release Candidate. They are future releases, versions that are not fully tested yet. Go to the latest one that is not a release candidate. In the example I'm showing you, that is version 2.05.01. This is a directory filled with downloadable files. You can download just the files you need. I will describe the process of installing source and compiling it. You will need to have the C compiler already installed on your system to do this. You can download the source in any of three of the compressed formats. They all three hold exactly the same things. When you get it downloaded, unpack the file into its own directory. It may or may not create a directory of its own when you unpack it, but in any case, you'll want to create a place for the source and store it all there. The user source directory is the normal place, but you can put it anywhere. By the way, you'll find Perl scripts in among the files, but you don't need Perl unless you make modifications to the assembler. All you need is the C compiler and linker. But you'll need to log in as super user to do all this, otherwise you could get blocked at some point. Then, in the directory with the source, type the command dot slash configure. That sets up the make file to match your system. Watch the messages scroll up. If there is something wrong and it won't compile, you'll be told about that here. Then you enter the make command to compile the assembler. This takes a few minutes. It compiles and links two programs, the assembler and a small program that is the disassembler. One more step. Still in the same directory, you will enter make install. That puts the binaries in the user local bin directory and installs the man pages. To make certain it's on your path and ready to go, you can type in NASM on the command line from any directory and cause the assembler to run. You should get this error message. If you specify the H option and pipe the output through more, you get a help screen. Once you've got that, you're ready to go. You've got a linker. You had to have one to compile and link the assembler. The only other thing you need is a text editor. There are several of them, and you should use whichever one you like. Emacs is common, and it's freely downloadable. I use VI, which is already installed with every Linux system.